welcome back to my channel cross stitch ricky my name is agna and uh, my channel is about the cross stitch and all my whips uh, finishes purchases uh, my stash and so on um <clears throat> i'm showing you today my new start to one uh, i started in uh, august of 2019 uh but i started stitching uh, most of it in january this year 2020 so it will be um probably i could say it's the start of this year and uh, that's the biggest project i've ever done or probably i will ever do and um it's going easy it's um <clears throat> it's not that um, many comfy tea or anything like that so it's going easy and probably you will be seeing this one uh, quite often um I have a plan how I'm going to be showing this video now to you. Uh, I have a plan to explain why I started this project. Uh, I have a plan to say about um, uh, all the specifics of this design. Then uh, uh, all the thread organization, uh, the stitching method, um, plan what to stitch. Uh, or I could say I wish watch a stitch <laughs> and how i'm gonna do the videos uh, plan of that so uh, the first of all i'm gonna be uh, introducing this um, design to you so that would be dome uh, the company from south korea i think so and uh, it's not uh, it doesn't exist anymore and it's not producing any more kits so this one you cannot buy online anymore unless somebody's selling who's not gonna stitch but be careful because people sell and the copies the ones you can get on aliexpress uh the thing is that on aliexpress the copies of it is not um, they're not uh, really cheap because uh, it's square a lot of threads and a very big fabric um, it's uh, um isn't them uh, kits first of all why i'm saying um that's a very big fabric so i'll tell you now the measurements is 60 by 247.3 centimeters in the stitches would be 380 by 1495 stitches so if you took out the calculator now to count how many stitches all together in this um, design so you can put them back because it's not everything what's going to be stitched on this design uh i could do in white the um, the background of it but i'm not gonna do it. the this design is designed like that and it's gonna stay like this it's 99 colors uh colors are dmc numbered and uh in the dome original uh, um kits uh, there is no uh numbers of dmc uh i think so latest ones uh they were with the dmcs as well but uh, i can't say for sure because uh, i got one it was with the dmcs already and they were before they had their own dome uh threads um, they are a lot like um dmcs so probably they just use the dmc and cover them with the dome um name so um it could be even sullivan's there as well so yeah I'm stitching this one with the uh, threads uh, uh, from DMC, Salomons, and uh, RS, I think so they called. <laughs> um, that's from uh, Amy Shop. Uh, that was the only one shop at that time, the one that sold uh, cotton um, uh, threads uh, looking like DMCs. Those DMCs were, I can't say DMC like it was uh, RS anyway, but they were, were cotton. They weren't uh, the cheapest ones. Uh, they uh, were um, real cotton because uh, comparing to CXC, the ones you can get on AliExpress, uh, so they were totally different and they were much better quality. Um, those another ones there where you can buy Joy Sunday or something like that. So they are definitely like. Um, acrylic stuff in there or whatever i don't know what uh, synthetics and stuff so i don't know what's the content of it but um, rs they were definitely cotton the worst part is that um, colors they weren't the same as dmc and they 
they are a little bit different whatsoever but when i have the big project like this one so i don't really see the big difference if i use uh, let's say one full color uh, for all piece uh, of one company and another i usually i am against uh, mixing the companies but uh, uh, this piece is for me as a sport i mean i want to get my arm a little bit uh, moving a little bit more uh i mean like uh, get um, my fingers and and the wrist uh, ready for another project the ones i'm gonna stitch i want to get the faster so this one is kind of for sports and i do sprints on the cross stitch saga as well and um uh, I want to find out exactly uh, how many stitches I can do an hour. Uh, for some reason, I do forget to pause and everything when I do not stitch. So uh, it's not that easy to find out uh, how many stitches I do an hour. But yeah, I just stitched up a cross stitch saga, and uh, there was a pattern or pattern online, and I downloaded it uh, just because this company is not in make anymore. So I don't think so that it's gonna be a big difference. First of all, uh, DMC and um, companies the ones that make and sell Solomons they do get a profit out of it anyways so the fabric itself i actually got like it was like uh, 75 centimeters or something like that and uh, i put uh, uh, three meters in that frame uh, everything is perfect uh, except for one thing that the fabric itself is really hard and uh, in the middle of uh, this uh, design uh, the frame actually is not uh, stretching the fabric right so probably I'm gonna be using those um, side um, stretching things there as well I don't know how they call it so probably uh, that's how and they call it stretchers so um it's enough looking at this picture now i'm gonna be showing you now all my progress the progress itself is actually uh really good honestly i did a lot uh this month and um i'm talking about the january though uh, i um have uh, two days stitched in uh, 2019 so i did the 548 stitches on that because all the preparations for this uh, uh, project it was really really uh, uh hard to do i mean like it was really uh time consuming and um and um i had to think a lot about it uh how to mm, organize and so on so uh, when i finally organized the way i think i'm okay temporarily so uh, i stitched 3665 stitches um in this month i stitched um five days this month and i did my plan <clears throat> i have 1.1 percent of all piece stitched and that's all in front of you uh i did start stitching with the colors so that's why you see a little bit more over here i did stitch like it was like this done in um 2019 and that's what it was uh, that's what it came to uh, 2020 and that's what it's done all in january so you see a little bit more over here so i did stitch color by color i kind of uh, took the logic one uh, like a uh, square and made um, all the thread finished and then gone again up so i kind of did uh, that in colors and then i have decided that i want to stitch this uh, parking method and there you go you have one uh, uh, already two lines so, so i will call lines not by stitch but probably i'm gonna do by the squares so it's one and a half line because there are five um stitches oh yeah if you notice i actually stitch sideways so i stitch uh, from the sides so it's that side over here um and as i see up to the middle it will be uh, not much stitched on this one it's not much you see and from the half of it it's more filling pattern so it's kind of interesting why is that so uh, i'll see if i'll be not happy how it ends so probably i will put one of those uh, leaves or flowers or something like that over here as well you know just 
transferred in the pattern there and I'll do probably here as well because it's pretty much empty over here and pretty much filling over here. It looks like there were two different designs were joined together or something like that. So yeah, I'm stitching like this. I'm stitching um, sideways and uh, I'm going to meet the girls, the ones that stitch on our group. Uh, they stitch in uh, from different sides, so I'm doing from this. <clears throat> yes, what, I, what else I can say? Um, one of the days I didn't stitch mod stitches because I had another project. Uh, the one actually is new as well. Uh, so I didn't stitch much on this one, but then when I uh, started, I couldn't stop. Uh, uh, the most of the stitches I've done, it's uh, 1,547 in one day. That was 24th of January. So it's quite a lot. And Cross Stitch Saga is actually letting me to count the stitches and to see the progress and to see. Probably I, uh, I'm going to enter everything in uh, Excel as well. And I will do the charts for myself. Uh, like uh, how my speed was going and how many stitches I've done by the day. So um, it's very interesting because it's downfalls and, and again uh, like a normal uh, average uh, amount of stitches I've done. It's interesting because it's statistics and I did study um, let's say the business and everything so I do like all them statistics. Uh, and I started keeping now you've seen my organization uh, which I write all them stitches and percentages and everything in my books so I do read from them now I don't have all the text like written of what I have to say because that's my probably 10th video already I'm doing because uh, none of them saved for some reason uh, so yeah I do not read I uh, already know by heart <laughs> And this project, uh, now the plan, what I'm going to do about the plan. Yeah, I I decided I'm going to stitch 10% uh, um, this year. And 10% uh, that would be um, at least 3,000, 4,000 a month. So if I do 3,000, it's not that bad. But then I'll try to do 4,000 next month. Um, then will be 10%. If I do 15% this year... So my finish in eight years. If I do ten percent this year, so I finish in ten years. Yeah, so that how big the project itself is. Now, what I'm gonna do about the organization? I have in the shoe box uh, all my uh, uh, threads because uh, they are pretty much um, like big organizers and a lot of threads there and taking a lot of space. So I keep them in a shoe box. Um, now I have this thing over here as I said I'm stitching uh, by cross stitch saga and the pattern on that one so I kind of need something like a key to know which one symbol is for what and uh, I use uh, numbers on my uh, threads I use uh, I give a number to each thread it's uh, from 1 to 99 as I mentioned, that's 99 colors, so I did that. And um, from 1 to 99, I have them done. And I have a DMC number written, and I have symbols drawn as well. So, I did work a lot on this as well. Because uh, I took uh, a chart, and uh, I, uh, um, I just went through all of it. And well, not all of the chart because it probably would take me uh, a lot of time if I actually check every each symbol there on the chart itself. So I took a symbol there, a highlight and everything. And then when I tried to uh, go and see, like, let's say from green to brown ones and everything, I found that so many the same symbols there uh, in uh, different colors. I um, remember T and P the most because uh, there were like five or six of each in every each uh, uh, color chart i mean like the yellow blue green brown um even the uh, red ones pink ones like they had as well like a red pink i would put in one uh, one place but uh, even the pink and the red they had the same symbol so i had to work on it i had to change quite a lot of symbols i decided i'm gonna do them all uh, so that's why I draw all them because uh, 
as well as I did uh, on the way, like I am uh, of everything, like I had to see if I'm not uh, given the same symbol to different trades. So I got this key because um, it's pretty much easy now. So when I do the parking method, so it's easy. I meet the symbol and I know the color. It's much easier when you have this and put a number instead of um, painting all them symbols on the organizers. Because I don't have original kit and I don't have original organizers and everything, so I cannot do anything else except uh, for Paco and the one that looks like Paco. Of course, somebody has to ring me in the middle of the video. <laughs> yeah, so uh, nothing else left now for me just to do with organizers. And organizers, I have uh, the ones from China and Paco and the one, uh, um, all of them, they have just the numbers. So I need a hundred, uh, nearly hundred, well, 99 numbers and I have them all because that's a 50 position, each of them. Um, I do have those small ones, uh, organizers from uh, China as well. Uh, they are chargey positions, but uh, I can't use chargey positions because uh, I need uh, hundreds of so uh, spaces. So I need uh, them four organizers for one project. I decided that no, I'm not going to use like that. Uh, if I have um, some project, the one that will be over chargey, so I'll be using two better in a, in a smaller one than like a lot of organizers and one big. Anyways, it takes a lot of space because that's not all threads, the ones you can see in here. It's square lots. You can actually see like this and um, here a huge amount and they go in already bad because they've been used. So, I mean, like tangled and everything. You can see on this one there too. Uh, then I have, oopsie daisy, uh, like this one. Then I have here as well. And I have another ones here, and I have black and white ones as well. So, a lot. Uh, organization is really important over here if you want to make this progress a little bit more faster than usual. You do, uh, like, uh, I was thinking maybe to do um, a separate uh, some organizer for needles. I mean, like, I wanted to put quite a lot of needles there with the trades there, thread them with the uh, treaders and everything, and uh, to keep them like this because I'm going to be stitching a lot and everything. But then I realized that all the rest of my um, whips actually stain, not used, not, uh, not going anywhere. So I did uh, decided to do a little bit and move on to another ones. So I cannot use a lot of needles because probably I'm going to be using them all because uh, here's uh, nearly 100 uh, colors. So I'm going to be using all my needles and then I won't have any to stitch for, them up for another ones. And I do have 20 whips at the moment. So, um, yeah, this, uh, this organization now, okay, pretty much. I can't stick much needles there in a packo because there is no space for needles. But uh, as soon as I finish Lanart, uh, Peruvian woman, so then I'm going to be changing them organizers. And uh, just because I'm recording, I don't know how many times the this video already. So all them trades are actually more tangled and everything. I will have to deal with them later on. Probably I will have to use uh, the um, thread conditioner thing there. like So... So when I came up with the symbols there and in the middle of a stitch in progress, I actually decided that I'm going to do some organizers myself. That would be just for needles and the threads. I did that from the kiddies um, blocks, the ones that uh, they use as a mat, uh, you know, the way like a puzzle or something like that. So I decided that I'm going to be using this uh, for, uh, um, for my uh, organizers for needles with the threads already in them. Then I had thought about uh, putting the magnets on the back of it and maybe stick on my stitching area because uh, it's big enough and I can actually put them. But they're not all of my uh, threads, the ones that stays when I'm parking, they're long enough that to go to them organizers. I don't know. I'll see. Probably after finish uh, doing the video, I'm going to stick the magnets anyway. And uh, if not, so I will be hanging them somewhere uh, with the magnets because usually I use magnets everywhere I mean like 
I can use, um, I can put that on some plank or whatever and just um, put another magnet on the bottom of it and just stick them together. So yeah, I used uh, the Paco, uh, the sheet, the one that's uh, written here, you know, the, the grid thing. Uh, because I'm using just a number, so I don't need any more Paco, uh, those sheets. I have loads of them. And um, I used the... Um, 3D like a foam thing, uh, the one that Dimensions uses for their organizers, uh, the ones that are made in China, and I just put over there and actually sticks perfectly. So these, I don't know if I'm going to be using them. Anyways, let's talk now about the parking method itself. Um, yeah, I uh, do not do uh, too many uh, stitches like in one line let's say if I have one color so I would go to the very uh, end of it and uh, I wouldn't like if I have here one color then probably here or here or here I wouldn't do so I have uh, almost every few stitches there I have new thread for that color so that's why you have a lot uh, a lot of here in front of you here so you know it's it's quite a lot and I'm not using too much so my back side doesn't look that bad though and um, that's why it's a little bit easier to stitch, but it's it probably goes a little bit slower too. But yeah, uh, when I stitch with the cross stitch saga, so I have uh, highlighted the color, or I have a highlighted area. So when I highlight area, I have a full line of that ten by ten, like so. So I have a full line. I'm going like all all line and all um, design. So. This helps actually, and I know exactly how many I have to stitch and where I have to stop. And I use the real parking method in this one. I'm not doing now half stitches on top, uh, just whatever it is. Uh, now here I have two stitches done, but uh, I did them because uh, they are. That's it. That color is not gonna be in any of them over here. So I did and. Uh, I tighten now how I'm gonna tighten the threads and what I'm gonna do at the end of it so I use the micro stitch yeah probably you're gonna be asking me what's that micro stitch because I don't know if you how you call it uh, but when you actually use uh, use like a small small stitch the one is actually over one small teeny tiny thread on the fabric and it could just fix the thread itself and that wouldn't go anywhere. So that's how I fix the thread. And it actually saves. Plus, you don't the usage itself is not as uh, big as you would go on the other side there and hide the thread beside, behind the stitched already area. So yeah, so it, it is easier because it's very heavy. It's a three meters of fabric and it's very heavy frame. So for me to put that on the other side, it's pretty much hard. So I can't do this. And uh, I had to come up with something like um, how to tighten the threads on the front. So when I finish, I can do something like that, like pull out the thread, then I stitch over that. But it's not really comfy as well. So yes, I do um, micro stitch on uh, at the beginning and at the end of uh, stitching. Well, sometimes I, if I see that I don't have enough uh, m like stitches to do with the full meter of the thread, so I just uh, use one strand, put them two together, make as a loop at the end of it, and that's how I tighten as well. So that's as well really, really good fixing. So yeah, but I don't really like the, the way the turn out crosses after that. So I try to avoid it as much as I can. So probably that would be it. Uh, for all the specifics and how I organize them, how I'm going to use. Now, the planning of uh, showing you this um, project. The plan for that would be probably uh, every each two lines, every each five lines to show you how it looks like. But uh, I don't know if, uh, if, uh, if that will be so interesting for you to see, like, you know, every few stitches, uh, all them videos. Well, um, if you have any suggestions uh, how you want to see this pro um, progress uh, of this piece, so just uh, leave a comment down below. But I'm thinking to do every five big lines 
I mean like 50 stitches over here so five lines every five big lines uh, to show the progress on a separate video not in the monthly updates definitely monthly updates will uh, this project will be in well if I'm gonna be doing them because today um, all the video recording was uh, totally exhausting uh, it wasn't saving uh, phone wasn't saving them videos and so on and so on so if it's gonna be like that all the time so probably i will be stopping recording at all <laughs> so yeah this is uh, this is my new project i'm very happy uh, i'm uh, i'm gonna be stitching the uh, three thousand four thousand every month i hope and i'm hope uh, i hope i'm gonna be um, stitching by lines well i always can change the method of it but uh, for now parking i want to uh, get more practice on my parking methods so so thank you for watching if you're interested in this uh, uh, program uh, pro project and uh, this uh, um, web so um, subscribe to my channel don't forget to put the like and the comments down below um, and see you next time in the next videos